We have another update from our utilities. Uh, from utilities, we have with us Jamila Lewis, communications supervisor from Nawasa. She has some specific updates uh, regarding Karku and PG Martinique, and then she'll give a, a, a general overview of what's happening on mainland Grenada. Jamila. All right. Good afternoon, Neela. Good afternoon to all viewers. Um, specifically to Karaku and Peter Martinique, unlike mainland Grenada, where we'll, we'll be shutting down operations at 9 o'clock, our response team, our disaster response team, has made a decision to shut off Karaku and Peter Martinique um, desalination plants, both of them at 6 o'clock this evening. Um, so if you are in Karaku and Peter Martinique and you are depending on a desalinated supply from Nawasa, please know that effective 6 o'clock this afternoon, we will be shutting off water supply to those both facilities. Um, in speaking with our production and quality manager, he has noted that um, the storm surge will may have a greater impact on those um, facilities. Of course, understand their, their desalination plants. So as a result, we made that decision. With regards to Grenada, um, the team is working. A lot of the water systems that were blocked are now unblocked. Despite having the state of emergency being from 7 o'clock, Nawasa will maintain its position to shut off all water systems at 9 o'clock because we do appreciate that some persons did not get that opportunity because of the block blockages due to the inclement weather. So we just want persons to be mindful that all water systems will be shut off at 9 o'clock on mainland Grenada and in Karako and Peter Martinique at 6 p.m. Okay, so I, I, I got some calls about uh, the Mount Panassas Tempe area. Could you give us an update on that? Some people were saying that they don't have water mm -hmm. and they really would like to fill up their tanks to prepare for, for the, next coming, the next couple of days. So what, what update do you have? Right, so those areas were served, are served by the Les Avocats water system. Um, we did have some blockage because of the rains that we received. Um, as of now, the system is, all blockages um, were removed. Um, the tanks, the systems are being recharged, fully recharged. Um, hence the reason why we're pushing, we're sticking to the, the 9 o'clock despite the, the state of emergency from 7. So uh, it is our intention that by a little later this evening, before 9 o'clock, um, the systems would have been open fully so persons can get some supply and then at least they would be able to maintain their storage capacity for the next few days. All right. And in terms of Karaku, you talked about the desalination plant. Uh -huh. Could you, um, is, it, is it just the desalination plants that are affected or the other um, systems are also affected? No, well, Karaku operates desalination. So we don't have rivers and lakes and stuff in Karaku. So it's just, so it's just the desalination plants. Mm -hmm. So both plants will be shut off at 6 in the evening. Both plants, okay. Both plants, so Karaku mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Piti Martinique. Right. Both of them will be shut off at 6 at in six the evening. At 6 in the evening. Okay. And mainland Grenada, all water systems will be off at 9. Okay. Uh, anything in terms of um, storage, uh, any advice you want to give to people about storing up water and how to uh, maybe get a clean supply of water? How can, how can we treat, you know, if we have um, those issues? All right. So... Of course, water storage is of paramount importance. Um, our message over the past few years um, have been that you need to have water stored to last at minimum three days, representing 35 gallons of water per person per day. But in this particular period, we are asking persons to extend your storage past three days because the reality is that we don't know what level of you know, damage there may be, infrastructural damage may or may not be. So we're asking persons to ensure that they have some form of storage to last at minimum um, six days. Um, we asking persons to consider of course the your family not forgetting your pets and one of the things that we will be doing and our social media pages are very active we want persons to adhere to public advisories from Nawasa with regards to shutting off water tanks and individual property connections because what usually happens is that when there is a natural disaster like what we saw in Hurricane Ivan persons they just leave their pipes open and then when there is damage to their particular piping network then all the water within the tank is run off etc so we would um, encourage persons now to look at your tanks look at your your plumbing system to ensure that there are no leaks ensure that your tanks are filled and ensure that you're able to shut off at a particular time understanding of course that if there is a natural disaster um, well with beryl then of course you would have some infrastructural damage and we want to ask tell persons um 
you know, during a hurricane, please do not go outside for whatever reason. I don't care if it may seem calm with the eye and the eye pass and it seem calm. Please do not go outside for any reason to collect water from any source, especially if your water supply is out. And after hurricane, we continue to maintain to persons the need to listen to NADMA and NOASA for official updates. You know, I know that there are all sites that are available, but any information which relates to water quality, um, storage management, reopening of water infrastructure will come directly from NOASA and NADMA. If you are uncertain about um, the water quality that you may receive after disaster, we encourage you to, to boil for at least five minutes. Um, so you can have that level of, you know, cushioning in terms of water quality. And of course, we're asking persons to please at the moment and please be prepared if you have a supply, ensure that you have supply to last at minimum six days. And we want persons, of course, to be able to manage that supply adequately because it makes no sense you store water and then by tomorrow there is no water within your home. And if we do have infrastructure damage and the systems are off for the next two or three days and we're not able to have water truck distribution or reopen the network, then you are challenged with a supply. So it's critical for persons, one, to manage the substore, of course, and of course be able to manage that supply adequately. So the water will be shut off at 9 p.m. tonight for uh, mainland Grenada, Grenada and at 6 p.m. for Caracu and PT, PT Martinique. Martinique. Yes. Will the water be turned off immediately, turn on immediately after the, the hurricane or, or do we allow for a couple of days to pass? No. So what that? happens after a natural disaster according to our, nat our disaster management plan mm -hmm. is that our teams will have to do an assessment of all water systems mm -hmm. because you have to ensure that there are no breaks along the distribution network whereby you have contaminated water coming in. So we will do an assessment of all water treatment plants and dams. And once that assessment is done and we are comfortable that we are able to reopen, then we are going to reopen. The reality is that like what we have seen in Hurricane Ivan is that after um, Hurricane Ivan, we had infrastructure damage. We had pipes that were washed away in the river. So of course, when that happens, you have a longer period enough for Nawasa to for be able to institute mm -hmm. repairs. So that is why we're asking persons as much as possible to have enough water stored, not just for three days, considering all what is happening with Beryl, not just for three days, but for a minimum of six days, and of course to manage. So once we are able and we are comfortable enough that we think that, you know, the network is up and running, if they are damaged along the infrastructure, we are able to repair those because what is going to happen? You can't just turn on a, a treatment plant because there might be leaks along the distribution network. And what happens then all that water goes to waste. Mm -hmm. So we would ensure that all the pipes are intact. If they are repairs to get done, we would ensure that it is done. And once we are comfortable that we are able to open distribution network, we will do so. We want to tell persons as well, depending on where the path of the hurricane goes there may be communities or parishes where there may be more infrastructural damage so of course sometimes you might be able to let's say it's in you might be able to open up anadale and the mardi gras and the least avocado because you may not have that level of damage but let us say the pe um, peggy swim or the Maribor or the monk in, in the eastern and northern side of the island then you may have a delayed time so that is why water storage right, is very and, important and, and it just depends on how much damage is how much damage is within that particular I, I, area i know earlier we had some challenges with the Concord one. Yes. Could you tell us, I know that's a tricky one, could you tell us how Concord is being treated um, in terms of, <laughs> like, I feel like the, the emergency team for Concord has to be you know, doubled because I know Concord has been a challenge throughout the season. Right. So Concord, greatest challenge we had for Concord was um, high turbidity. So um, whenever there is a lot of rain, Concord the water quality is terrible. So of obviously when it is that high level of turbidity, we're not able to treat and we're not able to put dirty water into a treated clean water storage tank. So our team, um, they have been on the ground. I can tell you Concord, um, as you said, it is one of our vulnerable systems, especially because of, and then we remember we were actually doing some work on the drone. I don't know if you, the dome, I don't know if you noticed that mm -hmm. we had to, uh, um, because we had some deterioration of the storage tank. So we had work that we were doing on that particular storage tank. Um, so right now we're f having it filled to capacity. So even when we shut off, when we open back, then um, the persons would be able to have a supply. But we are on the ground. Concord um, is a 
challenge area, especially when it comes to high levels of turbidity. You mentioned something in an earlier conversation that we had um, about having somebody dive to, to, mm -hmm. to access the, the dams. Could you um, just walk me through that <laughs> again? Because I, I, it, it, sounds, it, yeah. sounds, it sounds like a movie, yeah. you know, but it um, is a movie. <laughs> <laughs> so explain, ex explain to us um, that process, because I know once the water level um, goes up, it might be difficult for somebody to actually dive down. Yeah. So explain that, explain that for, for, for All right. Us. So all of our dams are in the river. I'm certain when we had a dry season spell, you would have seen the condition of the dam. So there obviously is no water within because you have depletion of um, water resources. But with heavy rains, of course, you're going to get the dams, some of them as much as 16 to 18 feet. So when the dam is blocked, what happens is that an operator has to dive 16, 18 feet, depending on the height of the dam, and have that blockage removed. So this, and especially in the river, when it is very heavy, the water quality is turbid, we are not able to have our employees do that. So that is why we always speak to the storage because we know, especially in the rainy season, when the river is very heavy. And can you imagine um, an employee going, and I was just looking yesterday at the Concord waterfalls, and how it was very heavy, it was very turbid. And can you imagine an employee going into this yeah. condition? So they would go, they would dive. Um, so once we are comfortable that the river has subsided enough and the water has settled itself, then we'll have the dive. The operator goes, he would dive, he would have to unblock it, and then we'll be able to have that water from the dam into the treatment plant for um, nice. treatment. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jamila, for your updates. Just give us a, a brief summary again as to what's taking place in Karakou and Piti Martinique. Read the shutting off of the water and, of course, on mainland Grenada. And then we'll take it, take it, take a little break and then move over to Grand Lake. They have an update um, shortly. Right. So um, effective six o'clock this um, this evening, water supply will be off in Piti Martinique and Karakou. Those systems are desalinated plants. So because of the storm surge we expect in the sister isle, we have taken a decision to have those both water systems shut off at six in the evening. Mainland Grenada, with with irrespective of the state of emergency that take that kicks in from seven o'clock, we have maintained our position that we are going to still keep the water supply systems on mainland Grenada open um, until nine o'clock because we want to give persons an opportunity to have storage facilities um, filled, um, considering of course that we have some water systems that were out because of dam blockage due to the intermittent rainfalls we had over the past 24 hours. So please um, consumers, we are asking you if you are able to collect and store, please have enough water stored to last at minimum, not three days, especially with the situation that is presenting, have water stored to last at minimum six days. And of course, try as your utmost to at least be able to manage the supply that you have within the period. Thank you so much, Jamila Lewis, Communications Supervisor from Nawasa. Thank you for your updates. We are here at the National Emergency Operations Center at the NADMA headquarters. Stay tuned for more updates as we continue to track Hurricane Barrel.